So lots of diplomacy going on. What are the chances of it yielding the results that the West wants? Well, Michael Kimmich served on the Secretary's Policy Planning Staff at the US Department of State, where he held the Russia-Ukraine portfolio from 2014 to 2016. Good evening to you. Good evening. Before we start and get your views on what's what the latest developments are, um, tell us what being uh, on the Russia-Ukraine portfolio for you meant. What did you do exactly? Well, our job was to peer about six or 12 months into the future uh, and to offer the Secretary of State uh, good ideas, hopefully, for uh, for making progress on his agenda. And clearly, that was a very active time with everything that was going on in eastern Ukraine. What were you suggesting at that time? <laughs> well, it, it all feels a little bit like a more innocent uh, era, although it was challenging enough uh, at the time. The focus then was really on diplomacy, uh, what was called the Minsk diplomatic process to, to manage the conflict between Russia uh, and Ukraine. And then it was also uh, very intensively on the question of reform within Ukraine, uh, the creation of, of, of better political institutions there. Could you ever have seen this coming? Clearly, that's what everybody wanted to get towards. They wanted a diplomatic solution. And hindsight's a wonderful thing. But many people saying if there was a stronger message or action taken prior to this against Putin, then maybe we wouldn't have got to this point. Well, it's certainly a legitimate argument to entertain at the moment, but we never saw anything like this coming, not remotely. We knew it was a serious conflict. We knew that there were high stakes uh, on both sides. But it's also the case that after 2015, when the fighting, the active fighting ceased, you have about a seven, eight year period in which not a great deal uh, happens. Of course, it's just exploded right now. But uh, it was possible, I suppose, to believe that uh, this was a semi-resolved conflict. Mm. From what you've heard from the Russian side, um, is any kind of is any kind of climb down possible? If if you were still involved in, in that part of the world, in hearing it from both sides, what would you be saying? I think that there's a need to to retain a kind of uh, a mood of receptivity, especially for any high ranking Russian general or intelligence officer who might wish to defect. Uh, to the West at the moment, uh, as happened at times during the Cold War. So you don't want to close the door by any means. Uh, but there's no hope uh, in the short to medium term of anything like conventional diplomacy for two simple reasons, that uh, Putin in the lead up to this war lied regularly to the Western diplomats who came uh, to meet with them. And the war itself is being pursued, pursued in absolutely brutal uh, and maximalist fashion by Russia. So yes, if they would begin to withdraw, I suppose, uh, a kind of diplomacy could begin, but there's no trust. And so without trust, there's really no prospects for diplomacy. And when do we get the trust back, if ever? Because you look at this and think, well, surely there has to be um, a, a way out of this for both sides, because the alternative is is not something you want to com contemplate. So how can that trust be rebuilt when you're dealing with um, a, a partner who does not tell the truth? Well, I would like to be an optimist, but uh, the <clears throat> the realist in me says that uh, as long as Putin is president of Russia, there's not going to be any kind of meaningful diplomatic relationship between him and Europe and him and the, and, and the United States. That's just over. Uh, that is something that Putin had, actually quite substantial amounts of diplomatic activity in the last few months, uh, and he gambled it away uh, on this war. So, uh, you know, there's... Uh, need for what's called deconfliction, uh, as the US and, and Russia pursued in Syria after Russia came into Syria militarily in 2015. That is still ongoing. That's important. Uh, but otherwise, it will just be a low-grade conflict, and hopefully it will stay at that. But it could well become a wider regional or even a world war, uh, what we're facing at the moment. How do we avoid that? I think we avoid that through um, two things, really. I think that uh, uh, we have to limit ourselves up to a point. This has been a debate uh, in Europe and the U.S. about a no-fly zone uh, in Ukraine. Uh, and I'm glad that President Biden has been clear that there will be no direct <clears throat> military involvement of the U.S. in Ukraine. So there's the importance of limits uh, of helping Ukraine uh, and doing what one can, but not going beyond a certain threshold. And I think the other way in which one avoids uh, a larger conflict is to have patience. You know, Russia at the moment is failing militarily. Um, I think they stand no chance of successfully occupying uh, Ukraine. It's very painful to watch, but uh, you know, patience could really be a virtue here. In, in some ways, the Russians are defeating themselves. President uh, Biden has his State of the Union address this evening. How should he explain this 
uh, defend uh, the UK's position in all of this, or some might say inaction in all of this? How should he put it to the American people, what's going on? There have been a lot of forceful statements from British, European, uh, American uh, leaders on, on the crisis, but there hasn't been a story so far that's been uh, put forward. And that, I think, is President's job, President Biden's job this evening, is to go to Congress uh, and to really narrate uh, what's happened in the last couple of months. How do we arrive at this crisis? Uh, what are the objectives? And most importantly, what are the principles at stake? You know, principles of stability and security on the one hand, but also principles of self-government uh, and democracy uh, on the other. It's, like, I think, impossible to observe this and not be impressed with Ukraine's President Zelensky and to be impressed with what he's fighting for. I think Biden really needs to put that into words tonight uh, and to deliver it as a coherent, vibrant and inspiring narrative. Michael Kimmage, thank you so much for joining us on Five Live Drive. Michael Kimmage there served on the Secretary's policy planning staff at the U.S. Department of State and he held the Russia-Ukraine portfolio from 2014 to 2016.